I can't quite believe that we are making this video already and how quickly is this year flying by? I mean, we're almost halfway through June already and I have no idea how that is physically possible. We wanted 2023 to be the biggest year at the channel when it comes to testing out and reviewing new running shoes. And I think we're doing a pretty good job uh, so far because last time I looked, we're up to about 24 first impressions or full in-depth reviews and we've got plenty more heading your way soon. But I thought today we'd have a look at the standout shoes so far. So let's dive into the video and tell you all about my top three trail running shoes in 2023 so far. Welcome back folks, thanks for joining us for another video. I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. So we are back today with a top three video and it's always good to look back and talk about the shoes that have been impressing me so far this year, but it's also great to get your feedback and to hear what you're enjoying. So those shoes that you're reaching for at the moment and you're loving to running, or the shoes that have been slightly disappointing. So definitely get in the comments below after this video, let us know all about your top running shoes of 2023 so far. So we're going to start at the bottom at number three and then we're going to work our way up to top spot and then after that I'm going to have a few honourable mentions about trail running shoes that almost made it on the list and you never know with a few more miles in them we might see them creeping on our top five trail shoes at the end of the year but coming in at number three is the awesome Hoka Mafati Speed 4. Now, when I reviewed these around four months ago, it was my first time running back in the Mafati model for some time. I think it was probably around three or four years the last time I ran in a Mafati shoe. And I've never actually run in the Speed version before. I've got to say it, I was pleasantly surprised. First up, the fit was very precise on my foot shape, great lockdown around the midfoot, and it just felt lovely and airy and plush straight out the box. Uh, I've got to say, if you do have a bit of width or volume to your foot shape, then maybe the Mafati Speed 4 isn't the shoe for you because that fit was surprisingly narrow. They actually felt a lot more balanced and responsive than I was expecting. And out on that first run, I got all excited about running in the shoes. And that's a great feeling to have when you take a brand new shoe out for its first run. Since then, I've continued to put some good miles into the shoe, including two longer efforts. And it really has continued to impress me. Me. I personally think this dual compound ProFly midsole is a great thing. It really does offer a good level of comfortable cushioning, but also high levels of energy return. So the Mafatis really feel like they're putting a nice spring in your step. And then clad in that midsole, we've got a nice chunky 5mm lugged outsole that just so happens to use some super sticky rubber from Vibram Mega Grip Light Base. So I think this is a really well thought through trail running option that can handle most situations. So great job Hoka and the Mafati Speed 4s takes my number three spot. Now the shoe that's coming in in second place is a very different shoe designed for a different purpose and it is a lot more stripped back than say the Hoka Mafati but it was just as enjoyable to run in. In fact it was actually a bit more enjoyable obviously because it's taken second place. I also think it's a trail shoe that kind of flies under the radar and you don't hear many runners talking about it which I think is a real shame because it's turned out to be a top performing shoe. So in at number two is the very orange New Balance Fuel Cell Summit Unknown V4s. A great trail running shoe with a terrible long name. I don't really know what's going on with running shoe names at the moment. They just seem to be getting longer and longer and longer and that doesn't make a YouTube shoe reviewer's life any easier. If I'm honest, these were another big surprise of 2023 because I've never run in this model of New Balance shoe before. So it really was a big step into the unknown. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah, I'm sorry, I do apologize. It was terrible. I need to stop with these lame jokes and just get on with the video. On a more serious note, I have always wanted to try out the Summit Unknowns, but I've never got round to testing them out for some reason. So when I saw New Balance were bringing out an updated V4 version, I jumped on their website and grabbed a pair for the channel, and I'm so glad I did. The first run felt awesome, really well balanced, nice and lightweight and responsive, and all I wanted to do was find the most technical sections of trail and run as fast as I possibly could, which at the moment, with my current levels of fitness, isn't that quick, but I still felt nice and nimble and had a great run. 
What with the world of running shoes seeming to go deeply cushioned midsole crazy at the moment, including New Balance with their More Trail V4, it was just nice to be back in a running shoe that felt really connected underfoot and that was just exciting to run in. Again, it is a narrow fit, but New Balance do offer a width fit option in the Summit Unknown if you do need a bit more volume and a bit more width in that toe box. But for me, it was a perfect fitting shoe. It really did wrap around my foot like a glove. So precise on that fit. It was kind of like it was tailored for my foot shape. And it really did remind me of uh, New Balance's Fuel Cell Rebel V2 road shoe that they used to make, which isn't a bad thing because I loved running in that shoe. For me, it's got just the right level of padding in the tongue and around that ankle collar. And I think for a more stripped back trail running option, it's got the perfect balance of cushioning and protection underfoot. You know, don't get me wrong, it's not gonna offer you deep cushioning like say a Hoka Speed Goat or a Nike Wild Horse 8, but it still feels nice and comfortable. And I would happily run this shoe up to say marathon distance or 50K, but I think it really works well on those shorter training efforts or shorter, quicker races. And I actually used it at the Freedom Racing's God Reavy 10K, a stunning 10K race on the trails down here in Cornwall. And the Summit Unknown V4s performed really well. So that's number three and the shoe that's taking second place on the list. So now it's time to find out about my favorite trail running option of the year so far. Regular viewers of the channel probably already know what's coming and it's not gonna be a big surprise, but it is the super consistent, very comfortable Exodus Ultra 2 from Saucony. Now, ever since I ran 80 miles in the original version of the Exodus Ultra at Endure 24 last year, straight out the box, this has become my sort of go-to shoe for those longer training efforts and definitely long ultra races. Uh, this shoe just seems to work really well for my foot shape, great lockdown around the midfoot, good hold in the heel, and fun fact, this Exodus Ultra uh, has never ever caused me any foot issues at all. No hot spots, no blisters, nothing, which is pretty hard to imagine considering I wore the original pair of the Exodus Ultras at the TDS at UTMB last year for 97 very hot miles with 10,000 meters of elevation and those shoes never came off my feet once and I had no foot problems at all. It's another trail shoe with a dual compound midsole setup and it really does seem to be very consistent on all types of terrain, whether it be loose gravelly trail, uh, rocky trails, super compacted trail, or even long sections of tarmac, it soaks it all up with ease. That uh, Power Run PB core inside that midsole seems to give you lots of nice pop and it feels like it's returning a lot of energy. Uh, outsole performed pretty good on all types of underfoot conditions. Maybe it does struggle a little bit in the real heavy, muddy situations, but it's not terrible. But the Exodus Ultra is just one of those trail shoes that I put on and lace up, and it just gives me so much confidence. So it had to take our top spot so far in 2023. As far as shoes that almost made it onto the list and probably would have done if we did a top five trail running shoes, and the first one has to be probably the biggest surprise for me in 2023 because I've never really got on with their trail shoes and I've always found that they really struggle in the sort of challenging tough UK conditions and it is amazingly enough the Nike Wild Horse 8. I've been super impressed with this shoe, love that React midsole, feels very comfortable underfoot but it still feels like it's offering a bit of energy return, a great midsole for running distance in especially if you have to cross over to lots of different types of terrain, upper work well for my foot shape, maybe it runs a little bit warm, could be a little bit more breathable but great lockdown and hold around my midfoot, most importantly a Nike trail shoe with an outsole that actually offers some grip and traction. And I have been waiting for this for a long time. I think if the wild horse could lose 20 to 30 grams in weight, it would actually perform even better out there on the trails. Also, another model from the guys at Saucony, their new updated Peregrine 13. Uh, I think this is a great update to the popular Peregrine model. Uh, they've actually added 1.5 mil of power run cushioning to that midsole, which is a big, big improvement when it comes to midsole performance when you compare it to the previous 12s. Definitely makes the shoe more comfortable, great levels of grip from that outsole, really good protection, and as far as the upper fit goes, I mean, it really was perfection for my foot shape. It felt like that shoe had been specifically tailored for me. It was such a great fit. And then we've got 
a shoe from the Kalis brand. So a brand we don't hear a lot about here in the UK, but this is their EX Boa. I've never been sure about having that boa adjustment system on a trail running shoe. Always been a little bit wary of it, but I actually loved it when I tried it on these. It allowed me to get a very personalized fit, great lockdown around my midfoot, but also really easy to adjust that fit on the fly. I actually love the standard EX2 version of this and the boa version. And I personally think that this is a really underrated trail running option. And then last but not least, a shoe that we've actually just tested out for the first time on the channel, and it is Norda's new 002. Uh, obviously, I've done three runs in this shoe, about 20 miles. So I definitely need to get a lot more miles in it before I make my final conclusion. But I really am enjoying running in these so far. Such a big improvement for me when it comes to the fit with the uh, added structure in the back end of the shoe. You know, better lockdown around the midfoot, way better hold in the heel when I compare it to the previous Norda shoe that we tested on the channel, the 001. So uh, I'm gonna get more miles in these, but I can really see this maybe getting on the list when it comes to our top five trail shoes at the end of the year. So there you have it folks, our top three trail running shoes of the year so far. And it's gonna be really interesting to see how many of those models actually make it onto our top five at the end of the year, because we've got some great trail running shoe reviews heading your way soon, including the new exciting Zinao 2 from Hoka, never running that model of shoe, so looking forward to that. And we're also gonna have our first ever La Sportiva trail running shoe on the channel with their new Jackal 2. So can't wait for them to arrive at Run for Adventure HQ and give them a thorough testing over the next couple of weeks. Don't forget, if you have enjoyed the video, to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Only takes a second to do by clicking on that little red subscribe box down there in the corner. And it is completely free, but it is a massive help. Uh, also, if you'd like to show your support more, we got some great merchandise available at runforadventure.uk, or you can go and see it by clicking on the link in the description below. And we've also got a Patreon page now where you can support the channel for as little as two pounds a month. Uh, not only is it a huge help to keeping the lights on and the cameras rolling but it also opens up a world of run for adventure perks so definitely worth going and checking out and all the links are in the description below but until next time guys thanks for all the support you give us it is incredible we'll be back here very very soon and as always stay safe and keep on running i was pleasantly surprised first up that upper was very precise on my foot shape, great lockdown around my midfoot, and it felt nice and plush straight out the box. Uh, it worked really... <laughs> First time back running in the Mafati model for some time, I think around three or four years, and I've ne never... Uh, <laughs> We're halfway through June already, and I have no idea how that is physically impossible. Impossible. <laughs>